My name is Theresia Reinhold. I'm a freelance documentary filmmaker slash journalist slash kind of historian. And, and I'm working on a documentary on privacy and surveillance for the broad audience, and I have been doing that for over a year now. It's a completely non-profit, not yet funded, and uh, creative commons project. And to begin with, I would like to present to you the trailer. Is that one? The Stasi actually had to use people to spy on you. Mass surveillance is the subjection of a population or significant component of a group to indiscriminate monitoring. It involves a systematic interference with people's right to privacy. But privacy is a uh, human right. Why well, not we're feeding the beast? Some of the scariest forms of censorship come from surveillance, and that's self-censorship. And it's like a conspiracy theory. You don't need conspiracies when you have the simplicity of business models. This system in one way is set up for them to make money and sell our little bits of data. Those different pieces of metadata can be linked together to profile someone and how their behavior is. Um, and that's what's threatening about it. If everything is public, if the norm is public, then anything that you want to keep to yourself has an association of guilt attached to it. The companies and the government want us to believe there is no alternative. Yes, there is a lot of money on the other side. Yes, there is a lot of power on the other side. But revolutions were never created when money or power were not on the other side. Wie kommt es denn, dass diese Massenüberwachungsprogramme jahrelang geheim gehalten wurden, wenn sie angeblich so sinnvoll und effektiv sind? Why, why is the reaction to doubt it rather than to assume that it's true and act accordingly? The actual cause of that is our human rights in the long term, is possibly democracy. Ich halte diese Debatte Sicherheit versus Freiheit für Propanz. Diese Werte stehen sich nicht gegenüber. I'm quite sure that none of those information in this film will be new for anyone here, but this film is dedicated to people who have no experience in this field, no time to gather the information themselves because they have to work like three jobs or raise their kids or simply have more pressing issues. And the good news, I'm starting with the good news. The good news, despite, I have, despite not having any funding, is that let alone the trailer is so far available in 11 different 11 different languages um, on Vimeo and also on YouTube. So, because the aim is that the whole movie in the end will be distributed uh, for free on the web and of course uh, translated not only in those 11 languages but I'm dreaming of a total of 20 different languages available in subtitles, closed captions, sign language translations, voiceovers, Braille and as transcripts an easy to read language for people to, who don't have enough uh, bandwidth to download a whole video, they can download just the audio version or just a transcript or who don't want to watch a whole video. Um, one of the reasons I don't have funding yet is this quote that I have been told by a producer last year in France. We do not need yet another movie on privacy and surveillance, we know everything about it. So you can see that people seem to be a little bit fed up with the issue, um, especially if you try to convince big producers with a lot of money uh, to fund a documentary that has been done by a singular person with no um, well status yet in the <coughs> film industry. But what this film is trying to do differently than all the other films that are out there, and there are amazing resources out there, um, which I really love and really hope to collaborate with as well, with the organizations who make them, is that I'm <coughs> believing strongly not only in accessibility, but also in inc inclusion. That means that for me, the narrator is as important as the narrative. So what you or anyone who watches this film will not necessarily see uh, while watching it are the usual suspects you can always see at conferences. And I'm not trying to knock against anyone here, but I'm trying not to have too many interviewees who are white men. 
Um, that has a reason because the film is not only made for a Western, European, US American or Canadian audience, but it is definitely made for all the other people on the planet who do not feel represented and who want, <coughs> maybe want to have people from their own background or from similar experiences th to themselves talking about those issues. Um, so far I've interviewed nine people. Those are the ones you can see here. And there's a typo, sorry. Um, <laughs> and not all of them are in the trailer because uh, when I edited the trailer it was already, uh, I haven't, it was before I c finished all the other interviews. So, And the next cool thing about this documentary is that um, there will be an app created for um, mainly Android phones, but if we can make it possible also cross-platform, um, for which we already have a mock-up which was created uh, back in August by um, Leonie Bruin from Novoda. And the app is mainly, the aim of the app is mainly to present the film not only as a whole but cut down into individual chapters so that it's easier digestible, faster to watch, uh, listen to or download in any other way. And you will be able to choose very specific um, settings in the beginning. So you can choose whether you want this uh, to be in a very high contrast for people with visual impairments, whether you want it in German, English, Swahili or any other language, uh, which kind of translation you want to have, whether it's subtitles, uh, closed captions, sign language, etc. And by this uh, I'm aiming to make it very, very easy for people to only download the app, which will be designed also in a way that when you download the app, it doesn't download all the video. So for people who don't have enough bandwidth, they can really pick and choose when and where they want to download which part, um, as opposite to Instagram or any other app that usually tends to download all the stuff uh, right away. And yes, um, Again, it's uh, pretty much me alone. I have some people who help me voluntarily with some things, the website, for example, or translations, as you can see, or the app. But the good news about this project is that everyone can get involved. Yay. Um, what do I need? Um, because the film shall be finished in some way uh, by August 2017, because that is when it's going to premiere at SHA 2017. But we need designers illust and illustrators to create animations to make it easier, understandable what the people are talking about. So that it's not just talking heads or talk about abstract stuff, to, but to have really easy to um, uh, understand animations. Um, we need, of course, storytellers, because even though I'm creating narrative, I need people to proof check this narrative, which will be possible from February on, because everything, um, all the chapters will be online available as rough cuts and people can just give me feedback and review and criticism and love and everything in a pad or in any other way they want, whether they want their name attached to it or not. Um, we need social media experts because fundraising nowadays has a lot to do with social media ex um, uh, expertise, which I do not have. Um, I should have, but uh, not for my own projects. Um, Fundraising geniuses are very, very much needed as well. Uh, motion graphic artists, again, post-production magicians, whether it's audio engineering or color grading or any other form. And you can also uh, crowdfund to the project. There is a little um, crowdfunding on Patreon going on. I'm also about to set up a Bitcoin account for the people who are rich in Bitcoin, but not so rich in euros or any other real world currency. Um, and you don't uh, have to worry. I brought flyers and stickers which are available at the table outside and feel free to take them. Um, they are not perfect because they were the first draft, but hey, flyers. And if you have any questions, talk to me. I'm here today and thank you.